In this chapter, we're going to cover liabilities. Liabilities are debts or obligations from past events to be settled in the future. There's two, when you think back to um, the origin of liabilities, companies have two general sources of funds. They can either go out and try to raise funds externally, or they can try to raise funds by uh, using the owners by uh, essentially doing a capital call where you uh, let the owners know we need more money and we'd like you to kick more money in uh, to help keep this company operational. So if you think about the origin of a company and there being two basic sources of funding, one being external borrowers, uh, borrowing money external and one being internally financing through owners, um, the liabilities would be the external party. Um, the interesting thing about this liability versus owner's equity balance is that liabilities have maturations whereas owner's equities do not. So if you're going to go raise funds by issuing some sort of liability such as a bond or going to get a loan from a bank you're going to need to repay that bond or that uh, note to the bank in some contractual obligation period. Whereas when you raise money from owners you simply do a season equity offering or some kind of uh, stock issuance and there's you don't necessarily have there is no maturity to it you know at some point in the future you may decide to pay a dividend to try to repay some of the capital or do a buyback program where you repurchase shares from the owners but there's no obligation to do so in some uh, specified period of time in terms of a refresher of liabilities let's assume that you decide you want to borrow ten thousand dollars from the bank the bank in this case is external to the company so this makes them uh, a debtor or a creditor it's not um, an owner of the company so in terms of assets liabilities and equity this is going to affect the assets and the liabilities cash is received because you're going out and borrowing ten thousand dollars from the bank so your assets are going to go up and that's the debit to cash of ten thousand dollars and then you've also engaged in an obligation to repay this liability at some point in the future when you have to pay the bank back the $10,000 that obligation represents an increase in your liabilities and when you increase a liability you do so with a credit so we're going to end up crediting something like notes payable. In terms of a refresher on how equity would work if instead of raising $10,000 by going and getting a loan from a bank you decided you wanted to raise $20,000 and you wanted to do so internally by asking the owners to contribute more money to the company then maybe what you would do is issue $20,000 worth of common stock, in which case when you think of assets, liabilities, and equity, now the two accounts that are going to be affected are assets and equity. Your cash will still be received, so you're still going to debit cash this time for $20,000. That's going to increase your assets. But now instead of increasing the liability as the offsetting part of the entry, you're going to increase equity. And the equity that you're going to increase is the owner, owner's claim on those assets which is a credit to something we could call common stock or capital stock. Now this term creditors that you'll see show up a lot, they're the providers of the borrowed capital, they're the source of the external funds and that's what creates the liabilities. So whenever you see a company with liabilities on their balance sheet it means they owe somebody money. Um, these creditors have no control over business operations but they do have a financial claim against the business and in terms of legal priority if the in the event of a bankruptcy or the fact that the company becomes insolvent and needs to dissolve you take the assets and you use those assets to first satisfy the liabilities and then the owners are only privy to the leftovers they have a residual claim to the assets so if you're not sure about investing in a company if you decide to buy a bond in that company or make a loan to that company, at least in terms of your protection, your legal protection, you are going to stand in line in front of um, the equity uh, stakeholders. So you might get a, a more return of your capital in the event of a loss. Another way that you can try to limit your loss is by asking for collateral as a creditor. So most companies will pledge some type of collateral for certain loans and a really good example of this is when you go get a mortgage on a house. So if you decide you want to buy a house, the banks will offer financing for that house, but they'll almost all, in every mortgage I've ever seen, um, you have to pledge your house as collateral. 
The reason they do that is because if you decide that you're not going to pay your mortgage anymore, the bank now can come in and take the house. So it limits their downside risk. Uh, obviously, if the house goes down in value, they're still going to lose, but at least they have a house and, they're, and they don't, they're not out the entire amount that they loaned you. Uh, and they're allowed to go after this stuff in the event of a default. In terms of the broad scope of liabilities, there's two types of main liabilities. There's current liabilities and there's long-term liabilities. Current liabilities represent obligations that you have to pay within a year, that you expect to pay within a year or within the operating cycle, whichever is longer. And you'll see this operating cycle phrase show up every now and then, and it's because there's certain businesses out there that do not complete an operating cycle within one year. And examples of this would be Boeing, you know, they're out there building jumbo jets. It may take them longer than a year to build a plane. Or cruise ship builders, if you're, if you're a builder who's building cruise ships for Royal Caribbean or Carnival, the boats are so big it, take, it might take more than a year to build those things. Um, so c even though you might have a debt that's due in a year and a half, if it's associated with that type of business, that could still class be classified as a current liability because it's within that operating cycle. Um, they're supposed to be paid from current assets or through rendering of services or their the anticipation is that you'll generally pay these things with current assets or through rendering of services. Um, so examples, common examples of current liabilities are accounts payable, short-term note payable, current portion of long-term debt, which is an interesting one. So if you go back to the mortgage example, if you buy a house as a business and you get a 30-year mortgage to finance that house, each year those 12 monthly payments that you have in the upcoming year really represent a current liability. Even though the rest of the note, you know, months, years 2 through 30, would represent a long-term liability, the current portion of those payments would represent a current liability. Um, and then you've got accrued liabilities, which would include things like salaries payable, interest payable, and then obviously unearned revenue is the part where it's the rendering of services. So current uh, unearned revenue is also considered a current liability because you're supposed to render a service within the year. And unearned revenue could actually be long-term in nature depending on uh, how long these service contracts may be in place for. Uh, an example of a current portion of long-term debt is when you go out and borrow money and you have a certain amount, you have multiple years to pay, to pay for the liability. So in this example, uh, Tony Company borrows $15,000 from Lisa Company for three years at a 4% interest rate. Uh, at the end of each year, they're supposed to pay one-third of the principal back, so $5,000, $5,000, $5,000 for three years, uh, plus any uh, interest that's accrued. And the interesting thing is that the way that this example is constructed, the interest is calculated based on the beginning balance of $15,000, and it doesn't change over the course of the, of the note. So if you want to think about what the total interest that you're going to pay on this note is, or that Tony's going to pay on this note is, is $1,800. And it's the $15,000 times the 4%, and it's a three-year note. So there's $1,800 bucks in total interest, and he's going to have to pay $600 of it per year. This is a little bit atypical, because generally when you pay off $5,000 of the principal at the end of the first year, your interest calculation for the second year wouldn't be still based on the $15,000. It would drop down to $10,000 times 4%. And then finally, for the final year, it would be 5,000 times 4%, because it's hard to accrue interest on a liability that you've started to satisfy. But nonetheless, in this example, the assumption is that the total interest for the three years is based on that initial principal balance, and it doesn't, the interest payments and interest accruals don't get adjusted each year. So the journal entry that you would record for the first payment would be a $5,600 credit to cash because you're going to pay back the $5,000, you know, one-third of the $15,000, and that's going to satisfy the note payable, part of the note payable, one-third of it, but you've also got an interest component of $600 that's going to represent a current period interest expense. And then if you look out into the future, right, there's two $5,000 payments that still need to be made and two $600 payments associated with interest that still need to be paid. And if you look at those two things, the first year payment that you just made and next year's payment would be stuff that would be considered current obligations because it's something that's due within a year or something you just paid. But the third year, you know, that final $5,000 payment and that final $600 payment really represents a long-term liability. 
So if you look out into the future, you've got two $5,000 and two $600 payments you have to make, $5,000 for principal, $600 for interest. The next one you're going to make is considered a current liability. The one you're going to make two years from now is considered a long-term liability. And that's going to be important when it comes to ratios because in, when somebody is trying to figure out whether or not they want to loan you money, they look and see what are your current obligations and what are the current assets you have on hand to satisfy those current obligations because they want to make sure you don't go into default. So the classification becomes really important that you're not lumping in the whole you know, 5,000, 5,000, 600, 600 as a current obligation. You're only taking the 5,000 and the 600 as a current obligation for next year so that you can make sure you have enough current assets to satisfy that obligation. So that's just a brief overview of, you know, the idea of liabilities, where they kind of fit into the assets, uh, equal liability plus equity model, and a couple of examples of how current liabilities work in the uh, current portion of long-term debt works. In the next couple modules, we're going to go into some more specific examples of long-term liabilities.